Good morning, guys and girl. There's probably only one girl watching the channel as it is right now. Uh, last night, I was out testing uh, the Mavic uh, Mini 2, the new update from DJI that would enable the smart controller support. And uh, the outcome of that video was uh, quite honestly not very satisfying. So of course, we need to go here on site and test out if this is the case, that you will experience this with the standard controller and the DJI Fly app. And I'll be using uh, the iOS version today. Let's just do a short flight outside the car with uh, this combination and then uh, top it off with uh, an additional flight with the smart controller just to verify that uh, which of the devices uh, have the issue. Again, I do want to point out, I don't like hating on GGI stuff. Actually, I'm very fond of uh, all the gear that GGI has made uh, during the time. But what I'm even more fond about is you guys. I don't want you to experience all these issues. So of course, I'm testing it uh, here in the forefront when it's uh, being released. So maybe you could wait out a week or two until DJI has uh, fixed stuff and not have to go through uh, connection issues and maybe end up losing your drone. With that said, it's becoming a little bit tiresome to do these uh, videos, uh, trying to sort of identify the flaws that the uh, DJI has in, the, in their products. Before we take off, I would like to say welcome to another video. I'm Henry Gosen, and if you want to learn how to make better videos with your camera and drone in general, and hopefully not lose your Mini 2 when you're flying with the latest software from DJI, then consider subscribing for my weekly tips, tests, and tutorials. For today's flight, I've equipped the drone with an ND8 from Freewell. And it's the polarizer version. All right, we're ready. Let's get airborne and test out two things here. We, we need to look out for a weak signal, connection issues and then we need to look out for lagging with the standard controller so let's just start the video here and fire up the drone and let's fly a little bit in this direction towards the new hospital in Hillerød that they are building it's a major project so just position the drone in around 50 meters like uh, I had it yesterday when I lost the connection you see this? This is uh, an amazing building plot, which was, by the way, the place that I used when I was uh, testing out the issues I had with the Mavic Mini. So let's just fly a little bit around, around this. So there's a lot of activity going on in there. This will be sort of the workplace for a lot of people. But right now it's, uh, it's handling like it's uh, supposed to. There are no apparent issues as uh, far as I can see. But we have been surprised before. <laughs> okay, so no connection issues there in around 250 meters. I'm not allowed to go over this plot, this building plot. So let's just fly it back, maybe switch it to sport mode. And then head back to my location and test out the lag. So I'm down here somewhere. Just fly on the other side here. Let's just move over here so we don't have any issues. And then fly it out to maybe 300, 350. And let's go up. And just turn around here. Very gently. We don't, we don't want to go to the big road out there. So 80 meters. So, there are no problems with the connectivity here. At least not within uh, the shorter distances uh, where I normally uh, fly to uh, keep it close by. I don't want to do the lag test uh, in uh, sport mode, so let's switch it into normal mode. Oh, there we go. So let's just fly a little bit around here just to get a feeling. 
Maybe we should go a little bit up here so we don't collide with the trees. So this is pretty smooth. This is pretty much what uh, I would expect for the drone to handle. So my rough conclusion right now, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's time to get back. <laughs> so we are back and there's a low battery. So let's switch the battery and uh, clean out. Come on, man. <laughs> so let's switch out the battery and um, clean out some uh, storage on uh, the drone and then uh, just do a short control test with the smart control. That part is a bit annoying that you have to relink it. When you're flying with the normal controller and uh, wants to get back to the smart controller, you actually need to relink it. I would expect that they would be capable of doing something smarter than this, so it sort of if you, di you didn't need to go through that procedure. I would expect that they would have been able to figure out something that was smarter than this, so we wouldn't have to go through this uh, procedure switching back and forward. But also, that's also not the normal use scenario. Normally, this one should just work and everything should be fine. Let's just take this for a short spin and see what goes on. And let's get airborne and get outside of the car and flip the antennas like this. So let's put it up in, in around 50 meters. So we do almost the same. Like that. And I actually don't think it's very bright today. So we just need to adjust this to 100%. Yeah, that helped a lot. We are flying closer to the hospital, soon to be hospital. And uh, right now there are no connection issues, but it is choppy, like we saw yesterday. So let's try and circle a little bit here. See, when I pan the drone like this, it's really, really bad. So let's just switch it into sport mode and fly it back. That's very clear. The lagging is not so bad, of course, if you're flying a straight, in a straight line. That's not what we see. And the gimbal is being thrown around. Let me just step out here so I have a clear sight. You see, this is this is a good demonstration that it's it's choppy with this drone as well. So no reason to spend more time on torturing this device. My conclusion on this is somehow similar to what I uh, made on the Air 2S. This combination that works uh, pretty much as uh, expected with the standard controller and uh, the drone. There's no more lag than uh, what's acceptable, so there's no issues there. The smart controller with the Mini 2, that is still not a very good thing. I will definitely take this controller and run it by uh, DJI Denmark and have them uh, check it up because I think there is something wrong with this one and there might be with some of uh, the ones that you have out there as well. This is not acceptable $800 for a device like this. But luckily, we didn't see any issues uh, with the standard setup, so that's a, a good thing. So the majority of, of you can just uh, do some heavy <laughs> flying. And also the ones that have a smart controller that actually works uh, is, uh, of course, uh, should just go and knock yourself out and fly and have a good uh, time. All right, I will keep you guys posted about the progress about the smart controller. It's, um, it's getting a little bit, uh, as I mentioned, tiresome to make these videos about all the stuff that's not working from TGI. So um, I think the next one I will make will be on the backside of uh, my controller being checked out by uh, Danish TGI. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you around.